Hi, I'm Amy, and this is my husband, Greg. That's me. I'm Ashlyn, and I'm married to Paul. That's me. And I'm Kyle. I'm Lauren. So, I'm Evan. I'm Jaden. And I'm Brooklyn. I'm Autumn. I'm Jensen. Hi, I'm Madeline. I'm Stevie. And, and we're, we're the Marriott's. Welcome to our large family vlog. Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. Okay, today I thought I'd do a little Q&A with you guys over some of your questions from the giveaway. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna watch my timer right here on my camera and not do the whole 40 to an hour video. You guys might enjoy that, but I'll do a little bit shorter for those of you that like a little shorter video. So I'm just gonna go through, say your name and what the question is. All right, so the first one is FF S Nelly. FF Snelly, I guess is the word. She said, uh, where is your dream vacation? So myself, I'm not that big of a dreamer. Like my husband, he is a dreamer. He's the one that's like, honey, we need to go on this. We need to do this and be great. And I'm like, okay, it'd be great one day. Like I thought at one time it'd be awesome to go to Alaska and do like the cruise and then go see the glaciers. And then I watched the Sarah Palin Alaska and I was like, yeah, it's just too cold there. So I didn't want to do that. <laughs> So for myself, like what I love is sunshine and heat and water and beachy sand. I love that. That's my favorite thing to do pretty much this summer. That is what I'm going to do every single day that I get a chance during the week. That's what we do is go to our, our local lake here and sit on the beach and sun and swim. And so for myself, I guess my dream vacation would be to some kind of island to do that because to me that would be awesome. Yeah, so mine would be like an island, some kind of island somewhere. I don't care where, just wherever. A private island, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. Beach, sunshine, sand, I'm good with all that. So that would be my dream vacation. Um, what I would love to do for our family, I would love to do like a take, is that fun for the kids? No, not for everybody, that's fun for mommy. Like my favorite thing to do Mother's Day, I'm like, take me to the lake, let me sit in the sunshine all day long. That's my favorite thing to do. Let's do a little barbecue right there. I'm good with that, that's my favorite thing. But if it was a family vacation, I would do something more of the lines of like, go see the Grand Canyon out west. That would be really cool to do a road trip to do that. Um, take the kids. If we did the, the ocean or something one day, that'd be really cool, but then make break it up with a few other things because you know, not everybody enjoys sunshine. I got some I got some white babies in my family. <laughs> so we some of us only got the brown skin, but most some of them got some white skin. So I got some that burn a little too quickly. So I can't, I can't be that selfish. But for myself, I would sit myself at some kind of ocean or water, whatever. It doesn't even be ocean. I, I guess it'd be ocean, right? Yeah, ocean would be great. Beach, sunshine. That's what I love. That's what I love. Sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. <laughs> sitting there watching the sun go down, oh, that would be my dream come true. So that's mine. Okay, and someone says, do you have, oh, not someone, I'll tell you who it was, Michelle. Michelle, Michelle H says, do you have much food waste? And it looks like you have almost zero food waste. Watching YouTube videos is my favorite part of YouTube. So yes, I think I see like some of those videos like the zero waste families and I'm like, yeah, that would not be us. But the zero food waste families could be us because we don't waste a whole lot of food. We, back in Michigan, which was really cool, is we, instead of taking food and throwing it out, we had chickens and ducks. It was the best thing ever. I would open my kitchen window and just throw the scraps out to the birds and they would eat like crazy. And we, we had 35 of them, so they ate like whatever you threw up. We moved here, we did get a small chicken coop and had like 10, 10 to 12, I think we had like 12 chickens at one time. And so, and then they like barely ate anything. And so I was like, these southern chickens are way slower than those northern ones. Those northern ones eat everything. The ones down here, they barely eat their food. I have to like scoop it out of their pet and not give it to them. <laughs> so, but for us, like we don't waste a whole lot of food like in our family. Most like people talk about, how do you not lose things in your freezer? We don't because we're constantly looking for food. Like I am like my food for the month, I pretty much go down to nothing in my freezer. And if I don't that month, I will do that the next month. So usually I don't go more than two months without checking and completely emptying the, the pantry and the freezer. So that's just something that's, we don't waste a whole lot that way. I don't feed my kids big portions because I realize they don't eat them and they throw them away. Sometimes we throw food away that they don't love. That's okay. We do that, but not all the time. And it says, question, what do your kids think of you doing YouTube? So yeah, they like whatever. They're like, okay with it. They're like, okay, whatever mom. And so now they're like, oh, wow. Like before it was like, oh mom doing her thing, sharing, encouraging. That's great. And now they're like, ooh, you can make money off YouTube. And I'm like, yes, you can make money doing YouTube. So they are benefiting because they get more things. We're able to go do more things. We're able to take little trips. We're able to go spend more money on clothing. We're able to go do little things that we've never been able to do before. So they're loving it. My little ones, so they were like, I know Jensen the other day, he was like, 
and he talked, we were talking about money, but business or something. And I said, well, that's what mommy does for a business. And he's like, what's your business, mommy? And I said, I do YouTube, honey. And he's like, that's a job? And I said, yeah, that's, that's a job that I do. <laughs> so for him, I just think I'm picking up a camera, recording myself for the day, because I like to record myself. <laughs> but he doesn't realize it's a business as well. So kind of cute. So they, they're like, whatever. I always ask them. I'm always make sure, like some of you guys think that some of my kids are, I like, I think someone said you seem to favor Lauren more. I don't favor Lauren more. It's just that Lauren would like to be on camera. She doesn't mind that. She has my personality. She doesn't mind being out here. When I first started doing it, she did not want to do it. But then the first couple times she was on there, she's like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I can do it. So my other kids, they didn't want to be on at all for a long time. And I was always like asking, like, can I record you? No, I don't want to be recording. I'm like, hey, I'm fine with that. I'm like, can I record your hands? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so I'm always good to ask them if they want to. Sometimes they don't want to. I got teenagers and guess what? Teenagers don't want to be on half the time. As they, as they get older and they kind of like, okay, it's fun. This is great. Then they, they'll do it a little bit more, but I always ask. I always ask them, um, do you guys want to be recorded? I know like when we have a uh, family come over or something like that, I'm always like, I always think in my head, I'm not going to record because I don't want to be the freaky, you know, person with the camera. Hey, can I record your life? Come to my house. We're going to hang out and have a camera. I just don't look at the camera in the corner of the room. <laughs> so I always say, you know, and I never ask and they're always like, yeah, I don't mind being recorded. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, hey, we'll record you. So, but I don't just intentionally go out and like throw the camera in their faces. And so that's what, um, so they, some of them, like, they don't even really know. I don't think my parents really understand what I do. The older ones do because they're like, oh, yeah, that, that is a job. That's income. It's become a business for you, Mom. And so they get it. But the little ones are like, you have a job, Mom? You, you, do, you do work? I'm like, yes, I do work all day. That's why I get up in the morning, kids. But to them, it's fun. They don't care. It's like no big deal. And it says on Deanna Rock, you said, what do you do for yourself to decompress? Any hobbies? Um... I thought about this a long time. Or I remember thinking years ago, like when I had a lot of little kids, people were like, you need a hobby. And I'm like, but my hobby is my family. Like I enjoy being a homemaker. I enjoy being a mommy. Like that's fun for me. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of extra hobbies outside of like family and home. I mean, I have my YouTube and editing. I like doing this thing. This is like something extra. I think like more, I guess it's more of a mindset. I know when I first like became a mom and really like, you know, when I had some extra time, it was like, I just like, like looked into doing more homemaking skills. Like I remember this before the internet because I'm older. I remember going to the library and getting like all homemaking books and all the, the books. Remember those hints from Heloise books? And my mom had one. It was an orange one, like 1970. I remember getting those and just like the kid, babies would go to bed and I would just look through those and write down tons of ideas. I became like a frugal person way back in the beginning of my marriage based on those books. And so I remember doing that one. There was another one, like a, I think it was like Penny Pincher or something. They were old books. And I remember going through it. I'd, I'd read old books. I'd find like old, like 1800, 1700, old fashioned cookbooks and read through them and homemaking books. And that's what I really, really like sparked like, ooh, I want to be like a homemaker like this. I want to do these kind of things. And so that was like interesting for me and a hobby for me. So I started doing that. And then, um, like I just enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed like teaching my kids. And so I started like doing more different teaching areas for them and looking up crafts for them, doing that kind of thing that way. So that's kind of, like homemaker. I like it. I like being a homemaker. I love being a homemaker. I'm not afraid to be a homemaker. That's something I enjoy doing. All you mamas out there being a homemaker and staying a home mom, enjoy what you do. It's a great calling in life and it's a wonderful thing to do. It's a job. It is a job. I have realized over the years that I do way more than most people that work a nine to five job every day. And I know I do. <laughs> At first, I didn't think so, and people would tell me, you know, oh no, no, that's nothing. Staying at home, out. oh no, no, I know I do more than a nine-to-five job, and so, but I enjoy it. It's not a bad thing. I enjoy what I do. I'm a very fulfilled person. I am very happy, very content in my life. Like, very happy. I don't dread my life whatsoever. Like, I enjoy every little bit of things that I do. So for myself now, what I do, like my kids are a little bit older and I have more time. And so it's like the Lord has opened up avenues. Like before it was my blog and I started doing book writing where I couldn't do it every day, but I could do it some days. And I started doing that on the side when I could. And then now I can do pretty much every day because my kids are Stephen six, gonna be six and a, six and a half now. It'll be seven, oh my goodness, seven in August. But they're older where I can do something for myself every single day. So I do these YouTube videos and I enjoy sharing. I enjoy doing that with, um, with you guys each and every day. So for me, this is fun for me. This is fun. It's not a job. It's like a fun, even though it's a job and it is a business and all that stuff, but it is a fun thing to do. I look forward to doing it. It's not like a terrible, like, Ugh, I gotta do a video today. Or, Ugh, I gotta do this. It's like, no, if I don't wanna do a video, no big deal. But if I wanna share, I wanna share because I know it encourages you and I know it encourages me too with your comments. And so, and to decompress, like I don't 
get that overwhelmed in my life, if that makes sense. The days that I do get like, okay, so days, okay, I'll tell you when I get overwhelmed is when I'm tired, when this mama gets tired. And that happens because I do way too much and it's not all the time. Like I know, well, let me use the example this week. We did Dollywood, okay? Dollywood was, you saw my video of it and like, it was okay. Would I go again? Probably not for a few years till my kids are older, but it, we did it, we went, no big deal. Was it, okay, so that to me was like, it wasn't stressful, it was more like, okay, it was like fun. I always say, my Lauren, I always say, it's gonna be a great day today. And we're like, it's just gonna be a fun, fun day. And so it's more of the sarcasm of fun, fun. But I was like, it's just great, we just let it roll. Just smile, Lauren, it's great. We're gonna get through our day and it's gonna be fun and tomorrow's a new day. And so we just, so I know we got home really late that night. We didn't get home until one in the morning that night. Yeah, based on traffic and so I was back up in the morning um, because I do church I go to church and I do um, my kids I teach and I do the worship with the kids so I'm there for two services so we have to be out the door by 8 30 in the morning and so for myself I knew I was a little bit I had to get up early because I like to prepare a little bit and practice and go through my step just so I know what I'm doing just to re I did it before but I wanted to reiterate so I was up early so I didn't get much sleep that night so I was a little tired but I went to church happy it was great it was awesome and I came home and I just I tried to take a nap I laid down in the chair and I was trying to like sleep and it just did not come and so I mean I slept for like half hour and I was like okay and then I just woke up at like the clock I'm like okay Lord I guess sleep is not gonna be my day today so I'm like that's okay I'll just go to bed and so um, it was a day like Maxine like jumped on me and she missed me all day so she like just would howl sitting on me and I'm like oh, okay fine I'll, I'll get up so I did and I get up and it was great we moved I didn't do a whole lot Sunday like I didn't do anything I didn't even clean my house I didn't do anything I just kept the dishes I kept accumulating we had plenty of food left over and then it was like I just relaxed and we I you know set up Maxine's outdoor system I'll show you that this week too and so I just made sure not to do a whole lot and then I went to bed so now then I went to bed we went to I don't even know what time I went to bed probably about 10 which was probably a little too late for myself and then I was a little I got up early today this Monday and so I got up, I had to get up early because the kids had, do uh, di uh, what do we go to? Doctors today. And so I woke up and I knew I didn't get enough sleep. And I was like, I'm tired. This mom is tired. And so I knew I wasn't feeling happy. So when I got up, I was like, do I record today? I'm like, no, I don't feel like I need to record. Even though it was a great day to record because the house was a disaster and it was fantastic to pick up and tell you about my day. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to today. Cause I, I mean, not that I was like a rotten mood, but I knew like to do one more thing would be like not, what I should be doing. And so then I thought, well, if I go later and I'm happy and I come outside, I'll do a video today of Q&A. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. But it worked out to do it today. And so, like for myself, I know to do that. So now tonight, I guess who, who is gonna be in bed at 8.30 tonight? Oh, this mom is gonna be in bed and then I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna put both earbuds in. Usually I put one earbud in so I can still hear the kids, but tonight I already told my husband, I'm like, I'm putting the earbuds in and you got kids. <laughs> so I'm gonna put earbuds in and listen to sermon and fall asleep and sleep for the night. That's my goal. So for myself, that's what I do because I know what my limits are. I know that I will need sleep and that I will just make sure that I get my rest. If I knew that I, like I knew Sunday, like I wouldn't get it much Saturday, Sunday, and then I was hoping for that night and I didn't. So I know tonight I better get some sleep or I'm gonna be one crabby, awful mama tomorrow. And I don't wanna be that way. So just get your rest. I know my women time of the month comes around and I know and I can feel it and yeah, crawling up my skin and I'm like, oh, stop. I know to get rest that night. I know to get my sleep. That's when I start faltering and need to decompress when I don't get rest. I can pretty much handle anything, trust me, anything in life and in my days when it appears because things do happen. Oh yes, they do. But when I don't have sleep, it irritates me a little bit more. Irritates, I guess is the word. So I'm more like, ah, okay, it's good. But like if I, if I get my rest, I'm good. So sleep is what I do to make sure that I decompress. And so, and then like I said, just make sure I take a break. Like tonight, I'm not doing anything. I'm recording this video for you guys. I might do another one for next week, we'll see. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna sit downstairs, dinner's done, we had leftovers, and the kids are eating actually right now while I'm filming. And then um, we're gonna go sit downstairs and watch a movie. I don't have like any high demands on myself tonight. So I just make sure I do that for me. That's what I do for my decompressing. I don't like need an extra activity to like, de-stress like I know back in the time I keep going off on this and I hope this is helping but I know like when I had a lot of little ones people are like you need to get out or you're gonna go crazy you're gonna do all these things well guess what I didn't have the opportunity to do that Greg worked nights when we had a lot of little ones and it was me and the kids and that's it I didn't have outside help I didn't have grandparents coming up I didn't have friends coming up I didn't have anything it was just me and the Lord <laughs> I remember going, okay. And I remember thinking and talking to friends, some friends and they had help come in when they had bad times. And I thought, I used to get like, that's so unfair. Like, they, that's so not right. But I realized that, you know, once I started that woe is me pity party, 
that it was over and it was not gonna happen and I was not gonna be happy. And I just realized I one day I just said, okay, Lord, this is you. This is gonna have to be you doing this through me because I cannot do this alone. You know my situation, you know what I need, you know my heart. I am gonna need you to get me through this. And I am so thankful that he did because like I realized I can do this whole mommy thing and I can do it by myself. I mean, my husband's there, but he wasn't there to do a lot of help help because he was working providing for us. And so I knew I just had to do it. And so I'm like thankful I did because it made me not be a, Oh, I feel yucky today. I need to go lay down. I need some money. Honey, stay home and take care of the kids. No, I didn't get that opportunity. It was just like, okay, just get up and keep moving. It made many times not laying in bed and feeling sick. It made lots of times it just, hey, just got to keep on going and pushing through. And so it makes you just keep on going. So it's just, not, that's me. That's myself. Okay, someone says, do you have a garden? I do not have a garden here. I would like something, but we live up on a mountain. You can see this behind me. This is like my backyard. Like right there is my house. We have a little area over here with the trampoline and that's it. And then we got mountain here and mountain there. Bears come, we have the coyotes, all the other animals that you get on a mountain. So we do not have a garden, but we have a community garden. And so we are so thankful that Miss Mary, I'll probably show that this year when we do that. She is so wonderful to include us and we go down there and we plant stuff with her and then we're able to go and pick things and eat from them. And that's so awesome. Back in Michigan, uh, we were near like Amish Mennonite farms. And so we had gardens all the time and that was awesome. And then whatever I couldn't grow, they would grow and I was able to get a lot of fresh produce. I love that. I did a lot of canning, a lot of freezing, a lot of more homemaking skills when we lived there because there was an abundance of it there. Here, I don't have a lot of that abundance here. I can't just get bushels of corn for really cheap. I can't get, you know, a bunch of tomatoes really cheap. I can certain things, sometimes opportunities like, oh, hey, I got a bunch of bushels of tomatoes. I'm like, oh, good, I'll take them. But not like back in Michigan when I knew that was going to be every year. It's canning season. I can go get a bunch if I didn't have a garden. And so, but that's what we did there. I would love to do some kind of containers or something here, but we just have animals and they just jump and jump, climb and things and there's like I said bears and deer everything else and so I don't think here would be ideal maybe like a container garden or something one day but we do marry that's not my gifting I I, I can do it not my favorite so for me it's like ugh, grow some lettuce or just buy it at the store I say I know it's healthier to grow it and I liked even our old house here I did plant some in the garden that was great and then it got so hot it scorched <laughs> so I was like okay North Carolina heat's a little hot but Mary has a beautifully raised bed gardens that we go to and I go pick some and eat it down there and that's right by a park we can go there every day so we do that which is great someone says why don't you do a Costco Costco haul I don't have a Costco so or I should, there might be like an hour away from here but not here oh I'm feeling raindrops I might have to stop what is your I might have to go what is your skincare regime I don't have a skincare regime I oh, I might have to move it's gonna rain I'm gonna see if I can oh it's gonna rain on me isn't it Ooh, I could get like an umbrella couldn't I I get an umbrella? I could soak in an umbrella. Okay, this is so funny. Do you know anybody that does a Q&A in the rain? I don't know if that's gonna make it weird or not, but it's raining right now. My house is loud, so I'm gonna try to continue this video. Maybe that makes the lighting better. We'll see, just keep the camera nice, Amy. Okay, so yours was, or it was Karen Couch. Hers was, what is your skincare um, regimen? Um, you have a nice complexion. I don't do anything for my face. I really don't. <laughs> so I know people are like, ooh, I got this miracle product. I don't do anything. I use water. That's what I use. I use water to wash my face. I don't wear makeup, so I feel like that helps me out a whole lot. I wear eyeliner and eyebrow pencil, and that's it. Once in a while, I'll do lip color if I'm feeling good, but most of the time it's chapstick. And so I've never been big on makeup. I did when I was a teenager. We did pageants and modeling and all that fun stuff. And so it just caked on all the time. So I just got tired of wearing it and just didn't do it anymore after that. So like I don't do foundation, any of that stuff. And so I feel like that helps my skin because it's not being bombarded with any kind of chemicals and it's able to breathe all day long. And so I don't even, I like just wash in the shower in the morning. At night, if I'm feeling like it's a little more greasy, like maybe I spent more time in the kitchen or did something, I might do um, a face wash. I used to, back in the day, I used to use the apricots, apricot scrub. I used to use that all the time. And then I've got Norwex face cloths now. And so Heather gave me some. And so I tried them and I was like, okay, do I love them? Well, then the other day I was using it, I was really exfoliating my face and it like cleared out all of my pores. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's just water. It's just water in the cloth. And so that was awesome. And so I started doing that like once a week and it really just cleaned out, you know, all the pores and all that fun stuff that's wonderful and gross with the, the skin. And so I do like, I do that. That's it. I don't do, if it feels a little more dry ever, which sometimes through the winter, not often I'll use a little, I have a little thing of coconut oil on my sink and I'll just put a little bit of coconut oil on my face. Nothing too crazy. I don't do sunscreen. I know, bad. Don't do sunscreen. Don't do any of that. I drink a lot of water, not tons, but I just drink enough water. I exercise. Um, 
that's what I do. So that's all I do with my skin. So no magic formula, water, water and soap and no makeup. That's what you do. Keep it clear and open and breathable and never touch your face. That's something, I don't know. That might be something weird. Maybe that's something you need. I remember being in school and my mom was a, co was a cosmetologist and stuff. And she was like, don't touch your face. You're going to get pimples and all that other stuff. And so I knew my girlfriends would always touch their face and they'd, oh, wherever they touch, they always had zits. And so I'm like, so I don't touch oops, pants. So I don't touch my face. And so I try to teach my girls that too. I'm like, so I'm, I like consciously make it a point not to like touch or rub my face. And if I do, make sure I wipe it. Or if I do, make sure it's with a piece of material for my shirt or something besides my greasy hands. And so I don't know, maybe that's a tip. Don't touch your face with your hands. Maybe that'll help. Okay, so how did I get started doing YouTube? Was Charlotte Sales. Charlotte Sales. Um, I started, okay, so back in the day I did a blog. And so I did a blog and I had to sign up a YouTube account because I was doing, I did a home at course. That was what I really started doing on online was doing um, home home economics because that was like my I feel like girls and some and boys don't get any like just the basic household skills and teachings in schools and stuff like that. And there wasn't a whole lot of books out there, so I wrote a home ec curriculum. And so you can go over to my blog, plain not so plain .com, and get it for free. It's not even a plug because it's free, but you can buy it if you want to buy the book. You can go to Amazon and buy the book, but you can go get the. Um, the course for free it's right on there it's all good and so what i had i started doing was videos for that to show like how to make um, bread how to crack an egg how to cut celery all those things and so i had to do a video kind of was, i think it was i tried vimeo but that was not where vimeo vimeo whatever it was and that wasn't working so i did a youtube and i so i started my account back in i think it's 2012 i started but i literally had just those videos and i didn't do anything for years and so um i don't think i posted at all no, just like baking and making that kind of stuff to help the, the blog thing. And so, so then um, moving here, um, I just had my little Blackberry phone. And so I started doing um, uh, just a couple videos. Like you can look at my first videos are what it was. We moved to North Carolina because we moved away from like everybody, everybody. And so I'm like, I didn't have like Facebook and I didn't have, and I thought, well, this way people can kind of see what our life is like. And so I did like a couple little clips. They're just like whatever cheesy. And so we recorded and I was like, this is kind of fun. And so we enjoyed doing that. And then it was like, um, we started doing a little bit. I would couple, do a couple things more. And then it was like, the Lord just said, you're going to share, you're going to do these things online. I'm like, what, how am I going to do this? And so I started doing it and I was like, there's no way I could do this. It seems overwhelming. <laughs> And so, and then I just started doing it every day and it just, he just gave me the grace to get it done and do it. And I enjoy doing it every single, I never thought I would do it Monday through Saturday ever. And I really enjoy doing it. It's not a really, it's not like an awful chore to do. It's not a, oh, I gotta get up and do it. I gotta work again today. I gotta do all these things. Like I enjoy doing these videos and I do enjoy doing the filming, the editing, and the, everything that goes with it. And so I'm learning, I'm learning with all these things. And so it's, it's good. It's a good thing. That's why I started doing it. I'm enjoying it. And I enjoy the feedback I'm getting from people. And so I look back and I kind of, like I think when I started, I don't even know, it was like February, I think I had like 2000, that was last year. Last February, I think I had maybe like 2000 subscribers or something like that, it might've been like New Year's Eve or something. And so now just in a year's time, it's like, it's almost up to 60,000. And so I'm like, that's just crazy. I'm like, it's just crazy, it's crazy. And so people are like, oh, you do YouTube. I'm like, I do, and I'm like, it's funny. I'm like, I literally cook and clean and like go shopping and people watch that. <laughs> so, but I know for myself, like, if I, like being a stay at home mom, I don't get to go out and do a whole lot of things. Like I do, do I mean I do do things, don't get me wrong. I'm doing things more and more as my kids get older, way more than I've ever done in my last 10 years of my life as a mom. But being at home, you don't get to go out and find out what other mommies do. You just talk to your friends and then that's it. So to be able to go into someone's home and see what someone does all day long, I think is awesome. Like to me, that's awesome. Because I love reading homemaking books, I love you know, doing that. I remember back in the day they had a couple of DVDs and I'm like, that's so cool. I would love to learn some of these. I'm like, someone needs to do like some shows. I would love to see like what it's like for a mom because you just would love to see all these other things. And so that's where this YouTube, I think is awesome. It's great. I mean, you can see a lot of it. Some people edit and they do these things. They try to, you know, they just more cut out like the real life stuff. And so I try to give you a long video each day because I'm like, sure, I could do a 10 minute video. And I'm like, but it's just like one little section of my life and a little bit of section of my day. And you don't get the whole big picture of everything. And so I'd rather be able to show mom as I look at what I do every single day is what you do every single day. I get up and I can be tired sometimes and I just keep going and I get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I clean up after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have to plan meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I gotta, I don't have to change diapers and that, but I still have to do school and I have to do all these things and clean the house, make sure kids are taken care of, spend time with the kids, get them out, do all these things. 
it's like normal everyday life. It's nothing exciting. We don't do huge trips. We don't do all these great fancy things, but it's just what most people do every day, I think. And so I think that's a great thing to be able to look at somebody else and go, isn't that cool? That's what she's doing each day. Right now, Amy's at home and she is reading her school with the kids. Or right now, you know, she's cleaning up breakfast just, just like I am. And so it's just kind of cool to relate with another mama on another level, I think. That's where I think, like, that's where the YouTube has been exciting for me. Did you always want a big family? Brenda Pryor said, do you always want a big family? Did we? No, we didn't always want a big family. Um, like we we got married and then we had you know a couple kids and it was like, oh no big deal. And then we had three kids and it was like, okay. And then we're like, well, why don't you know people say once you have three, why don't you have four? And so then we had four kids and it was like, and it was a big jump from three to four. And I felt like that's when I really moved into like homemaking mommy mode. That's when we lost a lot of our friends because we were the weird ones for having a big family. So we did four and then it was like, okay, we're doing this. We're having this family thing. And then at that time with our fourth one, um, we, um, that's when I became a Christian. I was, pre I was pregnant with Evan and I became a Christian, which is awesome. And so I was baptized. I was uh, pregnant. I was, it was in April and he was born in September. And so I remember getting baptized. He was in my belly. And so kind of cool. And so we didn't have any kids for five years and we didn't have any plans to have any other kids. We didn't ever do anything to really prevent it or not do it, but we just, God just did not give us any babies and so um, what during those five years is when I know I grew hugely in the Lord I really learned about being a mom and then my husband came to know the Lord in those times and so after that time is when we started going to church together and like kind of like learning about being family and really focusing on like wow instead of just the rat race of life why don't we focus on like um, you know being at like together and thinking of family business and being at home and all those things and so um, that was where the Mennonite church and that we learned a lot from them and so then after that it was like we just we were praying and we we're like okay Lord because we had a miscarriage after Evan and so um, I remember just we were just like okay let's just pray let's just pray that the Lord will bless us with babies and so if he gives them to us we'll just take them and so oh he did <laughs> He blessed us with Jane in Brooklyn, Autumn, Jensen, Maddie, and Stephen. Every uh, year and a half to two years, we had a baby. And so uh, it was just like you just, after everyone, it was like, do you want to have more? And we're like, yeah, let's have another one. It was like, even right in the birth, it was like, yeah, another one. Now, when I was pregnant with Stephen, like, I felt in my heart, like, and it wasn't, and his was the best. This was the best pregnancy, the best birth, the best recovery of all my kids, the number 10. And I remember like in the other ones, there were some bad ones. Oh yes, Autumn. I remember Autumn. She was like a good 10 pound baby. Now that baby would make you not want to have any more. But I still remember thinking, oh, let's have some more. Let's have more. And I just kept that, that feeling of like wanting more. So when Steven was like, I was pregnant with him, I felt like this is like, we're done. This is good. We're done. And so then I was like, okay, let's just wait and see. Maybe she's just tired. Maybe I'm just tired because I have 10 kids. And so, but as soon as we gave birth, it was like the Lord just said, no more. This is going to be it. And I was like, okay. And like, I felt like such a piece about it. Like such a, like, it wasn't more like, oh, really God? No, it was like, no, this is it. And so like, I know we're, we didn't have any more babies. And so it's just like, God just like confirmed like, that's it. And it's like, okay, cool. We're good with that. So, you know, if he would have said, you're going to have more, we would have had more. Trust me, would have had more. <laughs> so, but that was just what we did in our family. So we just, it's not for everybody. Definitely not for everybody. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. And then this one, I like this one. This is M Lane, E-M Lane. She says, if there's one piece of advice for a newlywed couple, what would it be? I just got married in September. So what would be the one, the one piece of advice? There's, there's some, there's, oh, there's not, not like someone. Number one would be put, put God first. Yeah. God first. That's, if you put God first in your marriage, that is when things will happen well. Um, respect your husband and then he will love you. Be devoted to him. Forgive quickly. Learn to smile and just enjoy the ride. <laughs> I know sometimes I'm always like, oh my goodness, I want to be that control freak of a wife. And so sometimes I just have to step back and just have to smile and just like, okay, just enjoy the ride. And things go so much smoother that way. And so, you know, um, keep the communication open, talk, share. If your husband's not a talker, share your feelings so he knows what's going on inside of you because they can't just read us. And so there's a whole lot of things. And I'm sure you're in that newlywood phase of life and everything's wonderful and peachy. But when you're feeling stressed, talk to him a little bit. Don't, don't like, I know back in the day, like he would come home from work and after be, I had a lot of kids, a lot of kids. Oh yes, I did. <laughs> I just would want to pouts about everything in my life and everything was happening. And I realized that I had to wait for a minute until he came. And one other, let me, give, oh, let me interrupt myself here. I would be home with kids all day long. I had baby spit up on me. I had my hair all a mess and ponytails and life and crazy. Definitely not vlog worthy mama back then, but I would make sure 
before he came home, I would fix myself up. I would. I wouldn't like get all crazy and fancy, but I'd make sure my hair was straightened. If I had to put a new shirt on, I did. New apron on, I did. And then when he came to the door, I would greet him with a smile. I would stop what I was doing and I would go to him, give him a kiss, and greet him with a smile. And just to say, hey, I love you. I hope your day was wonderful. Even though my day was crazy or whatever, I didn't go into that. I just made sure to go do that each and every day he came home. And some days he was tired, some days he was crabby, but it didn't matter. I was just like, oh, let me get you. And then I would get his dinner for him. And then when the kids wanted to be all crazy, I really tried to keep them quiet just for like that first hour half hour until he got home so he can unwind a little bit and just kind of relax and move into mode of okay let's move back to catholic mode of household and so that was what i did myself i know a lot of women will say oh i shouldn't do that you've been home with kids all day long and he shouldn't but for myself i felt like great peace about that so fix yourself up a little bit mamas check yourself in the mirror make sure you look good before he comes in the door even though you might feel awful <laughs> and then you know have his food for him if you can and that's that's huge and just being able to and just and, and just love, love your husband, love him. That's a good thing to do. Show him the respect, show him the love. Let him know that you are his number one cheering fan. So, okay, that was more than one little advice, but I'm going more, I'm going more of my time here. I'm gonna make this longer than I, it was. Let's see. Oh, Marlene says, I love watching your videos and the energy you have. Where does that come from? Jesus. <laughs> Told you, I only do what I can do because of what the grace that the Lord gives me every single day. And so I would not be able to do this on my own. Trust me, no sane woman would. So do not attempt this. I would not recommend you do this on your own, but I do what I do because of what the Lord allows me to do. I look to the Lord Jesus every single day of my life for everything. One moment I get up, what am I doing, Lord? When I go to bed, what am I doing, Lord? What am I doing when I get up in the morning? Give me my list. Give me what I'm supposed to do. That is what I do. So I'm going to put this back over here. That is what I do every single day. And if I feel like I'm not supposed to be doing something he lets me know and I don't do it and so that like today was a tired day for me and I was like gonna get up and record because it was a great day to record but he was like nope today's not a recording day and I was like okay Lord it's not a recording day and so it was a Q&A day so that's what you guys get with this one so okay so that's Jesus Jesus is your number one word okay and so, okay somebody else says um is it Ch Ch Chaney Acres C-H-E-N-E-Y and she says how are y'all like the new mattresses now that you have them for a while Love them, absolutely love them. Love the low mattresses, love them. Definitely love those mattresses. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then I'll close this and I might just record another one for you. Okay, um, Ru I'm gonna have to spell it R O O B A R I N O. Ru Barno? I don't know, I'm bad with words. What kind of vitamins do you take to maintain your energy? I don't. I take a, um, Back in the day, I took a prenatal vitamin every single day of my life, and I felt like that made me so much more, like I just went and did. I didn't get sick, I did all these things, I just felt good. Then I stopped having kids, and I stopped taking the vitamins, and I just felt a lot more worn down. So I went back to taking a women's vitamin. So I take a women's um, regular multivitamin every day, the gummies from Sam's Club, I get those. I take that every day. And then I also started taking um, vitamin C because of, like we got sick at Christmas, and I was like, oh no, 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 I'm not gonna be doing that. So I forgot, like I need to maintain, take something. So I take vitamin C, tablet and then I also take um, I was taking after that sickness I started taking the doTERRA um, on guard I was taking the on guard and every single day I bought that for two months and took it and then I got a product review for um, what's it? it's gonna rain for what's that red stuff called I'm thinking the essential the elderberry elderberry pills and it has like zinc and a bunch of other ones in it and I showed that in one of my little clips that I had for um, a box so I had free stuff to do a review for and so I started I take those right now and so just something nothing like specific that feels like it's power thing but something to ward off any kind of sickness in my life and so I like those too those are so the on guard or the they're like elderberry syrup pills is that and well, I'll do one more okay last one I promise the last one Karen Shepard says I was just wondering if you ever get tired of doing all the things you do yes I do <laughs> so, and I share with you and let you know just like I do and it's not that I'm tired of my life it's that I've had a lot of extras and so it makes us mama tired like when we did the Dollywood and that but I just make sure that I get it so okay so I'm gonna close this because it's turning into a lot longer than I wanted it to be originally but I think I'm gonna record another one for you for next week because it's Easter and it'll be busy that week because we got family coming in so I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys again tomorrow because we always do have a great night okay bye-bye